Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Daria Senani and I'm Head of Growth Marketing at GPO. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. All participants are on mute and if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question box in your Zoom control panel. I will bring them up at the end of the presentation. Today, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, smart warehouses, the value of real-time visibility for better operations. Today, our guests are uh, Michel Ramelet, Channel Account Manager at Ardis Group. Uh, Michel has 15 years of experience in warehouse management system support, project management and sales, and Maxime Lambert, Senior Solution Consultant at GPO. He is one of the very first senior project manager at GPO, where he has been leading GPO deployments and support for large pan-European retailers and industrial companies. So let's see what we're going to learn today. So the, the, here the agenda. So the first thing we're going to talk about is real-time and predictive visibility and how it helps to streamline warehouse operations. Then we're going to talk about data-driven and collaborative warehouse management systems. And last, we're going to talk about best practices for different sectors, retail, manufacturing, 3PL, 4PLs. So that being said, thank you everyone for being here and it's over to you, Maxime. Thank you very much, Doria, and uh, welcome everyone. To begin with, we all know that uh, we now live in a world where we feel a need for service excellence. Indeed, we all experience things such as real-time tracking visibility in our day-to-day -day habits. When we order food from Deliveroo, when we order goods from Amazon, even when we order Uber. And we feel that it's, this notion has become a must-have as, as well as a key differentiator. As we know, issues on B2B Issues over transport on B2B business can lead to great impacts on disruptions, which trigger a need to get or provide the same service level as we could get on B2C operations. Yet, as technology evolves, and as we're gonna see during this webinar, it is now possible for B2B companies to provide this service as well as much more. So as Maxim said, um, expectations around delivery are growing continuously and there is a strong impact on the warehouse as customers want goods to be delivered faster than ever, comfort to what they ordered and where they want. So today, Smart Warehouse has to be capable of using new emerging technology, technologies and innovative equipment such as uh, drones, uh, IoT, predictive algorithm and so on. So one of the goal of a modern warehouse management system is to be capable of coordinating all the different tools to collect and execute all the information available and make decisions in real time. And talking about uh, available information, we are really curious um, to know how you are informed of incoming arrivals in your own warehouse. So we will start uh, a quick poll uh, so that you can answer this question and we will share the results with you. So you can see the questions here. Um, how are you informed on incoming arrivals? So no information, request to transport organization, request to carriers, information proactive, proactively supplied via notification, uh, alerts, email, SMS, and so on. So we will give you a few, uh, few seconds to answer. Okay, thank you for participating to this poll and let's see what we have. We see that we have a very, um, let's say, a different sort of answers, but we see a high trend in proactive information supplied to your warehouse teams. 
which is actually extremely interesting and shows and highlights that you're actually on a good way towards automation within your supply chain. Um, as you already know and or feel, a lack of visibility or predictive visibility information can lead to great or costly issues within your organization. And let's just maybe deep dive into some of them. The first one, I would like to focus a little bit on productivity issues. Indeed, without visibility, a lot of efforts will be required and a long chain of communication will also be required to perform, let's say, lower dead value operations. By meaning lower dead value operation, I would say positioning operations or even answering to an angry customer that hasn't received these deliveries. And these operations are most of the time managed by dozens or hundreds of people, depending on the size of the company. The second one would be high transport expenses. Without visibility, without track and trace, you will lack reliable KPIs to leverage the, your, your carrier's performance within your transportation tenders, which of course is a loss of money at the end. Third one, which is very specific, but uh, highlights well the need for visibility would be line holds. If you're working within the industry and especially within the automotive industry, you definitely know that a delayed truck, even about minutes of delay, will lead to thousands of euros of expenses if it leads to a production line halt. And last but not least, and it is the topic that interests us today, each issues surrounded warehouses. Without visibility, maybe stockouts will happen and unpredicted stockouts will happen, as well as maybe high dwell time on, load, um, on loading or on loading docks. For instance, we have a customer using Shippo within its warehouse for its warehouse manager to assign the right resources at the right time on the right dock to streamline the loading or loading operations. We then clearly see that track and trace information will help in avoiding all these issues. Yet, to do so, it needs to be used not only by people, but also by your entire ecosystem. And I will let Michel develop it a little bit further. Yes, so how do you manage to improve visibility within your supply chain? Well, one of the key aspects is that your WMS has to be well integrated with other software in order to build a real-time collabor collaborative ecosystem. So the smart warehouse has to be capable of interacting with its, eco its ecosystem. Um, traditionally, in the past, we already were communicating with upstream software, uh, such as uh, ERP, uh, APS, or manufacturing execution system for, uh, for the industry. And this data coming from the, the upstream software had to be capable of planning and adjusting the usage of resources. In an industrial environment, um, like Maxim was saying, this is particularly critical because you need to be able to plan production. Um, and in terms of transport, the new data will allow to gain visibility and it can have an automatic impact on resources and equipment in the warehouse. Uh, companies will be able then to optimize or adjust activity depending on external events. Um, today, we also need the information from the downstream software to help companies satisfy customer requirements in terms of visibility in a distribution that is getting more and more complex. So customer expect nowadays to have full visibility on their command and not only during transport. Um, to give you a concrete example, let's take a company that is only capable of sending an email uh, when the shipping is ready. I think that's probably what most of the e-retailers do today. But some company are capable of proposing much more and give a full visibility on all their logistic operation and not only transport. Um, so one of our customer, uh, fashion and household company, will send the information that the command has been received in the warehouse. Then they will send another information that preparation has been started, items are packed and then ready uh, for transportation. But what is even more interesting is that it will allow their customer to cancel their order until the very last moment. Why? Just because they have the full visibility on it and they know exactly until when they can intercept it. Um, and as you can see in this example, synchronizing systems across the supply chain is vital to be able to respect the customer promise. And this is why Hardy's group has chosen to partner with Shipeo so that Reflex WMS will get reliable real-time data on the transport. 
Thank you very much, Michel, for mentioning this partnership, which I am actually pretty fond of. But first things first, let's introduce a little bit Shipeo and introduce it through six different layers that actually pretty summarize well what we do. The first two ones are called Collect and Connect. It's important to see Shipeo as a data aggregator, which will be able to collect, transport data, main data on your transport orders, GPS positions even from multiple sources. Today, we've developed a network of over 600 integrated systems with each GPO, and these 600 systems actually equip your, your carrier's IT landscapes. The second one would be onboard. On top of the technical connection that we do with carriers or with any sort of system, we onboard the users, we train the users, we're accompanying them into reaching a high level of data quality coming out of Shippo, which is mandatory if you want to turn into an automated supply chain. Fourth one that I quickly mentioned today is anticipate. What's important to keep in mind is that as Shippo sees what's happening over transport, it can predict what's about to happen, especially with the computation of our ETA. Fifth one is communicate. Shipeo can communicate on any sort of issue on transport to internal or external users. We can use SMS, we can use emails, we can use notification, or even we let users use a shared portal if needed. But also, it can also proactively communicate to your end customers on incoming issues on your transport, which is a key differentiator in, a very, in businesses that are in a very competitive mode. And last but not least, it's improvement. Shipeo will leverage your data with BI functionalities, meaning it will provide you insights on what happened on your transport, insights on your punctuality rate, on lead time, and they help you to drill down on the corresponding issue which will trigger the right action plan. The great example of this is one of our customers that is using our insights to challenge its carriers on a weekly basis. And between the time it started this and Four months later, he managed to gain 15 points of punctuality on his deliveries on his points of sales. So to summarize a little bit this, Shipeo is then a platform that can accompany you in digitizing your, your supply chain operations and processes. So digitalization of the supply chain, in a nutshell, this is just about putting the right information at the right time and at the right place. So having an expected time of arrival, an ETA of trucks that are sent to the WMS, whether it is for loading or unloading goods, and the system will be able to continuously adapt the flow and send an optimum workload to either the logistic operator or the machine. It will help streamline the work of teams, of equipment, and also the waiting time of transporters. Um, let's take an example uh, for a supermarket activity uh, that has decided to do some promotions on seafood. So the truck coming from the fishing arbor is late. Uh, it was stuck in a traffic jam and it will miss the load leaving in two hours to replenish the store. So what decision does that leave to the warehouse manager? Well, knowing that the ETA might be one hour too late, it can decide to delay the rest of the load and wait for the truck. It can also decide to prioritize commands without seafood so that the rest is not impacted. Obviously, it can also reschedule trucks appointments. It can decide to modify the preparation of commands to avoid a peak. Basically, it can do a lot of things that are up to him and his business, as long as he gets reliable information and as a modern system that will allow him to be flexible. Um, another, another example, but this time in a mechanized environment with conveyors and trans stockers. And it's time, it's uh, the outbound truck that will be too late. So depending on the workload, um, the operator can decide either to postpone the preparation of the command, but if he wants to prepare it anyway, maybe because there is some spare capacity, maybe he can decide to send it to a, a buffer to avoid congestion on the dock door. And 10 minutes before the truck will finally arrive, he will send a mission to transport from the buffer zone to the actual dock door, uh, which might have changed, by the way, as other trucks are busy at the same time. Um, so the operator will have the possibility to streamline preparations, decide what should or not go to the dog doors based on reliable information about the actual ETA of the truck. 
So historically, uh, WMS were found in warehouses. That's where the, the name stems from. But um, since a few years, it started to be significantly used in factories uh, as part of industry 4.0. And this is why we chose at Hardy's group for Reflex to increase our functional coverage for factories. And we have done the same, by the way, in stores and other urban logistics hubs, but I will come back on that uh, later on. Um, so today, it has become critical to synchronize logistic flows with production flows. Real-time data on transport allows to have real-time monitoring of the supply chain. Um, for example, one of our customers is a world leader car manufacturer. Stopping his production line, like Maxim said before, it will cost thousands of euros and it has to be avoided at all costs. And car manufacturers, they work a lot with suppliers and them as well. Um, and they have put in place a very short uh, Kanban process with four hours of work for the production line. So having a real-time visibility on transportation, whether it is by boat or by truck, um, it will allow them to identify receptions that are at risk and potentially inventory shortage. So as long as they know it, they can adapt accordingly. They can reorganize production and run another production order. And later on, during the production itself, it helps them to secure the replenishment of the production line and again, limit the risk of full stop of the production line. Thank you, Michel, for highlighting in this slide, multimodal transport. Indeed, in order to help your entire ecosystem into having full visibility on what is going to happen, you need to trust a multimodal visibility provider. At Shipeo, what we did is that we developed a full set of APIs that allow the gathering and the collection of transport data from multiple sources. As we see, we can connect, we can receive data from port terminals to get container statuses. We can get data from um, ocean freight software to get the GPS position of the boat and thus of the container. We can connect, of course, to standard track and, uh, tracking systems from uh, your carriers, TMS, telematic, to get position of the trucks so on the truck level, on your orders on the truck level. But we can also connect to warehouses systems or parcel specialist systems to get information on what has been loaded, what has been delivered. With Shipero, we'll be able to provide an overview of what's happening on the truck transport, on the truck level, I'm sorry, but at the same time on the good level, on the goods that are carried out, which will then allow your ecosystem to fully synchronize with delays and also shortage of what's inside the trucks potentially. But now let's focus a little bit on what functionalities Shipeo can provide to you and to your ecosystem. The first one I would like to mention is enhanced collaborations within your partners. Indeed, with Shipeo, you will have a shared platform with your carriers and maybe with all stakeholders. You will be able to do EDI, to receive events from multiple sources, to chat, or even to implement workflows with your stakeholders. For instance, what for a workflow, what we call a workflow, would be a business process or an operational process that will be where all actors around transport Will, be, will have to act and to provide information according to a workflow, a pre-designated or pre-designed workflow. The good example of this is a customer of us that will use Shipeo as the collaborating tool between its suppliers, its carriers, its uh, ma plant managers, as well as its transport management, and will allow and will manage all issues of our transport through this collaborative platform, through these collaborative actions. Second one would be document management. We talked about, um, let's say, huge efforts to do low added values. We can talk about claim management. With Shipeo, as it's collaborative and it's shared with carriers, you will be able to receive at the same time on the platform new proof of deliveries or even pictures of anomalies, which will smoothen the litigate resolution processes. Of course, we do GPS positioning but at the same time, geofencing. So we automatically detect at what time the truck arrived on the site, at what time it left, and we, at the instant, compute a dwell time. We do compliance follow-up. We share dashboards. We share knowledge with all users to reach the high level of data quality. We do alerts, proactive communications to you, to your third parties, or to your systems. And of course, we compute an ETA, the estimated time to arrival, 
to be able to turn into a predictive transport management. And I would like to deep dive a little bit now into how we compute an estimated time of arrival. First of all, it's important to understand the difficulties to predict this data because it is linked to a lot of what we call uncertainty factors, such as the legislation, where is the truck driving? The legislation is linked to the notion of break, of driver breaks. When is the, truck gonna, when is the driver gonna take a break? Will it be a long break, a short break? These are notions we need to, we need to incorporate in uh, predictions. Potential dwell times on upcoming stops. This is notions we need to know. We need to know notions about the traffic, about weather conditions, about maybe potential existing lead times. We need to know if there is one or two drivers in the truck. And all this uncertainty, uncertainty provide difficulties into computing the ETA. How did we solve it at Shipper? After three years of R&D, we have developed our own algorithm based on machine learning, meaning it's an algorithm that will learn from past experiences. It will learn from your data, it will learn from all our customers' data and recognize patterns, existing itineraries that are taken by multiple customers, existing carriers. Uh, it'll take into, into consideration the seasonality, of course. Driving around Paris, for instance, on a Monday at 8 a.m. is not the same thing as driving around Paris on a Sunday at 8 p.m. So we will take this into account as much uh, on top of traffic, on top of geography information, volume of goods that are transported, and uh, of course, take into consideration historic lead times, historic dwell times that have been seen on the existing stop that we've already tracked. And on top of that, it will blend all this information with resample, retreated GPS data provided by your partners. By doing all this blend, GPO is now able to provide a very accurate and stable predictions on at what time the truck will be arriving on the dedicated stops. As we see here, we provide a 95% accuracy in our prediction 12 hours before the delivery. And this ETA is constantly challenged by automotive industries when they're using shipping. So these predictions are now reliable, stable, and will help your entire ecosystem to switch from a reactive mode to a predictive mode. So now that you know uh, a bit of the magic behind the calculation of ETAs, we will now see how retailers can use the inf in this information. So like I was saying before, we have uh, extended our functionality functionalities, but we have also developed a brand new user interface um, to execute logistics inside stores and other uh, kind of urban hubs, uh, dark store, uh, drive through and so on. Um, so here as well, visibility on transportation is extremely valuable and having a precise ETA for when goods will be available, then the store can be able to mitigate um, the transportation risk. Uh, for example, one of our customer is a department store. Um, they have a store in Paris where it's so sensitive for traffic jams, so like Maxime was saying. Um, uh, so there is no reserve in this store um, just because uh, surfaces are extremely expensive and they prefer to, all, to use all the surface uh, for selling. So what they did is that they built a nearby uh, warehouse in the outskirts of Paris and they will do uh, very regular replenishment uh, based on what is actually purchased um, by customers several times per day. Um, so knowing when delivery will come, that could really help the people in the store to better plan their operations, to limit the risk to be interrupted in the middle of another task, typically selling, um, and visibility is essential for all these new logistics schemas. So the WMS has to be a super orchestrator and the smart warehouse uh, allows to collect data from multiple sources that are used in the warehouse logistics flow and to exploit this data. And this allows in turn a bigger reactivity of the chain and helps streamlining the activity. A fixed configuration should be avoided at all costs in a smart warehouse because it has to be capable of adjusting in real time and managing exceptions from one day to the other, even sometimes within the same day. So a WMS should be a smart engine to pilot the warehouse. And for that, it needs to gather multiple data and use them with advanced algorithm. Uh, let me give you a few examples of, of this algorithm. Uh, we have released recently a new functionality that is called order flow balancing. And basically what it does is that it, it allows the system to deal with unexpected uh, 
urgent demands typically for, for e-commerce and add them to the pool even when picking is already started. So another one is labor load supervision where the system is capable to identify uh, areas that are overloaded and the ones that have spare capacity. And then we can decide to either let operations um, decide what to do or leave the system to take automatic decisions. You can see it on the screen at, uh, at the top uh, left with a uh, green, blue and, uh, and red, uh, red bars. Um, a last example is the steering of uh, material handling equipment, uh, whether they are robots or any kind of uh, mechanization. And this is thanks to our w WCS master. We can follow and we can track all mechanized processes from the WMS dashboard, and it can help managers to take decisions. Uh, as you can see, for example, an in in insufficient flow of, uh, for a given process, you can schedule the flows differently or the preparation wave. And gathering data has to be displayed easily. And you can see on this screenshot uh, how easy we made it with the usage of dashboards. We have given the possibility to interact with this dashboard. So it's not only display, you can act directly on this screen uh, if you see an alert or something that requires your attention. And in the end, only exceptions or special events have to be managed, uh, which gives back for people, um, which gives back time for people to focus on, on what they do best, uh, value added tasks such as uh, people management, for example. So in short, the goal here is to be able to cope with exceptions and ultimately to respect the customer promise. So real-time visibility on transportation ETA is beneficial no matter what kind of activity you do. And more importantly, it answers issues that are specific for each vertical. Um, so let's take FMCG, for example. Um, you can think of, of reducing a delay penalty and delivery disputes, and in the end, increase the, the customer satisfaction. For retail, uh, the main target would be to ensure availability on the shelves and optimize operations in stores. For industry and automotive, uh, we talked about this already, we want to secure the transportation risk in a just-in-time environment. And finally, for 3PL or 4PL, we can talk about the digitalization as well as the industrialization of, of care activities. So, if we summarize a little bit all we've said, um, in order to build such a sophisticated and proactive ecosystem, there are three major steps that we propose. The first one would be collect and connect, meaning deploy your solutions, deploy your visibility platform, deploy your WMS, deploy your TMS, deploy your ERPs, train your users, onboard all stakeholders, and accompany everyone in reaching a high level of data quality coming out of each system. When this is done, it's step number two that we call analyze and predict, meaning learn from your experiences, learn from what you've seen, find patterns, master your data, leverage the data coming out from each system with either BI functionalities or machine learning from functionalities to start foreseeing and forecasting things that will happen. And once you've mastered all this, step number three and final step, automate synchronize your system, connect all your system, use EDIs, use APIs, which is actually a, trendy, a pretty trendy technology today, that allow your entire ecosystem to be self-sustainable from data. Such a journey will, at the end, of course, as we saw, improve your operations, but also provide you with a full and non-exhaustive set of benefits for either you, your teams, but as well as for your entire organizations. Perfect. Thank you very much, Maxime. Thank you, Michel. So before we go ahead and take some time for your question, uh, one quick comment. You will receive per email the PowerPoint and the video recording, so no worries. If you've missed something, you can listen to it again. And a reminder, you can type now your questions in the um, question box in your control panel. So we are going to start the session. It looks like we have already a few questions. So the first question we have is about the collaboration between Ardis and Shipio. So are those, uh, so like are those two solutions connected? Uh, who wants to start? Michel, do you want to start? Maxime? Um. 
Yeah, Maxim, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll take this one. Well, of course, we are a fully connected solution. So uh, we exchange data from these systems in order to create what we call transport orders on the platform or to push back uh, tracking information to our DWMS. Uh, what we're using is mainly what we APIs. So it's REST APIs with the JWT token authentications, which is definitely reliable, stable, stable enough to interface two systems and to make sure that we have full synchronizations between the two. Perfect. Michel, do you want to add anything? No, I think uh, Maxim made a pretty good summary of, uh, of how, how that works. Um, like we said, WMS, uh, what we call a modern WMS today has to be connected to its end environment. So yeah, using API is definitely the way, uh, the way to go. Okay, perfect. Um, next question we have, I think it's for you, Michel, again. How does visibility on transportation have an impact on mechanization robots? Um, yes, um, so indeed, I think I, I, I mentioned very quickly uh, our WCS master, maybe I need to, to dig a little bit more into uh, details in this one. Um, let me explain you better what we have done here. Um, basically, what our WCS master is, is just an integration layer to interface easily with, uh, with any WCS on the, on the market. Um, and the idea is to, to steer the mechanization based on capacity and constraints um, and get data back uh, for consolid consolidated reporting, the, the dashboards I was, uh, was showing you before. Uh, and why? Because there can be multiple WCS uh, in the same warehouse. There can be one uh, for the conveyors, there can be one for a mini load, one for a trend stalker and, and so on. Um, let me give you just a very, uh, very easy example, uh, just a conveyor uh, that will be used by, uh, by a company uh, right after the receiving. So they will receive good and they will put it right away on, uh, on, on the conveyor to transfer it to the, to the reserve area. Um, we know that this, um, this conveyor has a limited capacity of a given amount, like let's say 10,000 boxes uh, per hour. Um, so if Shipeo informs us that, uh, that an inbound truck uh, will be late, uh, maybe we'll have a capacity problem on this, uh, on this conveyor uh, because there will be other um, uh, receptions that will arrive at the same time. Um, so here the role of the WMS is to, uh, is to alert um, and either act accordingly if we want to automatize it or uh, give all the elements uh, to the manager that he needs uh, to, take the to take the decision. And all this, this steering is driven by the data the WMS gets from various information, whether it is from mechanization, robots, actual people, because we also get information from what actual people are, are achieving, or from GPO uh, for transportation uh, information. Perfect. Um, so next question is going to be for you, Maxime. And the question is around blockchain technology and if Shipeo solution is based on it. It's a very good question. Unfortunately, no, Shipeo is not based on any blockchain technology, but could be a following step for us. Okay. Um, then maybe, Michel, for you, what kind of technological innovation a warehouse should contain to track and locate products uh, to avoid the situation of being lost in a huge warehouse? Um, yes, um, there, there is a technology that is actually quite adapted uh, to that, which is, uh, which is RFID. Um, the problem of that most of the time is the, is the cost. Uh, so for low value items, um, doesn't always make sense, at least the return on investment is not there. But we have some customers using it uh, for, uh, for higher uh, value items and it works, it works really well. Uh, you can know uh, at all time with, uh, with certainty uh, where your, your items are because um, as, as, uh, as the question mentions, um, you always rely on, on, uh, on, on what people do. Uh, and if they do a mistake, uh, then the system will, will uh, uh, will act accordingly. So yes, RFID is definitely the, the answer to that. Perfect, thank you for this answer. Um, next question for Maxime, and it's a question around career onboarding. So how do career get connected to the Shipio system? Great question. Uh, what we do, first of all, it's important to keep in mind at Shipio that we do not impose any means of tracking or any means of connection, as we know that 
most carriers are equipped with GPS systems, TMSs, etc. We will adapt to what they have. So dealing with how we connect it to carriers, let's talk about two sources of connection. There is a technical one and the operational one. Technical one, we're basically going to be using API, uh, our APIs or uh, the, the carrier systems API, the Transix or Telematic uh, Stoffler API or the TMS or the API they uh, expose to us linked to their TMS and just exchange data. So we're going to be doing a full integration within between Shipeo and the system that the carriers use. Second connection I would talk is the operational connection. Of course, it's good to uh, plug each system with each other, but at the same time, we provide what are called onboarding. So it's operational con um, connection, meaning we're gonna be training the users in using our platform for uh, their customers that is asking for traceability, as well as for themselves, how so to manage their, uh, their assets, how to uh, receive more orders from another customer. So we're gonna be training them operationally speaking and technical wise to make sure that they're fully connected to the platform. And of course, most actions that will be required on the platform can also be fully automated with actions that are managed in the carrier's TMS and these we receive them through API connections. Perfect. We have uh, quite of an interactive session, that's great. Uh, we still have a bit of time, so don't hesitate to send uh, your question in the, um, in the Zoom control panel. So the next question is going to be uh, back to Michelle. And the question is, what is the added value if a career in the complete chain is not connected to Shipio? Because in my opinion, then there's a missing link and the VWMS is not able to predict anything. Um. Yes and no. Uh, yes, it would be better if it was connected. Um, but no, the more information you have, uh, the better you can, uh, you can act accordingly. So if you have, uh, I don't know, 50 carriers and only one is not connected, you will be able to, to act on, uh, on, on, on 90% of your, uh, of, of, of your uh, incoming or outgoing, uh, outgoing goods. Um, so the more information the WMS will gather, the better it will be able to act accordingly. So yes, it would be better to, to, to have this, uh, this carrier connected, but even if there is one that is not connected, you can already act on, uh, on the rest. Great. Uh, Maxime, do you have anything to, to add to this answer? Definitely. I mean, um, of course, it's a very um, understandable question. And uh, that's the whole goal of what we do in Shipo when we deploy a solution. We make sure at the end that all carriers are connected. We have teams dedicated to accompany these carriers and also to explain to them the benefits that it would have in being connected with Shipo. We are talking about API connection with the TMS. We're talking about administration cost for a carrier, knowing that he will be receiving his transport order straight to their TMS will actually push them into connecting to our platform because he will have, of course, a big ROI within his company just by interfacing his system with ours. So that's the whole point of deployment. Leave no one else behind. But as Michel said, even if one is not connected, you might have an overview and action, leverage your action on maybe 95, 98% of your operation. And this remaining carrier will become not obsolete, but uh, will not uh, impact all of your, um, let's say, operations. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think next question is again for Maxime and it's related to the ETA. So it's a quite passionate uh, topic, uh, the ETA. So could you give some concrete examples on how your ETA is used by customers? Of course, I love talking about the ETA. Um, if I had to answer this question, let's uh, provide maybe four typical usage that our customers see in uh, having a visibility platform, providing them with an accurate ETA. The first one, it would be maybe, it would call it uh, end customer experience. In the beginning of the webinar, we talked about delivery, we talked about Amazon. Our ETA can trigger an alert, the sending of an SMS to uh, someone expecting a load and provide them with the Amazon experience, meaning full traceability of its coming goods with, of course, GPS positioning, DTA, and events that can be shared with end customers. A good example of this is uh, we have a customer that is delivering um, uh, parts in uh, construction sites. And he is asking, he is developing, let's say, a premium offer to its customers that if they subscribe it to, they will be receiving GPO's SMS 
if a load, if a goods have been loaded, if it's on the way, if it's uh, approaching as well, if it's, it's delayed. So that would be the usage number one and customer experience. Usage number two would be operational management. The ETA will allow you to differentiate between your uh, transport with transport orders, let's say, or your loads, which one is late, which one is going good. And you can then do what we call exception management, focus on what's going wrong instead of trying to have an overview on everything that's happening. So that would be usage number two, and it's really linked to productivity. Usage number three would be linked to resource management, giving back the example is using Shipo on its uh, warehouses, but uh, we have another example, we can use the same example for customers who are using Shipo as well for transport management, for, so for visibility for their uh, points of sales. Having the ETA will allow you just to simply assign a resource on the docks for loading or unloading operations at the right time instead of having these people waiting for trucks and let's say between brackets doing nothing while waiting for an incoming truck. So you can reassign them to do other things while you're waiting for the truck that's supposed to arrive because you know exactly when it will arrive. And last one, which is really linked to industry, and uh, it's uh, the best use case we have with, with uh, an automotive um, builder who's a customer of us, is that our ETA will be, through an interface, be sent to the production system within the plants so they can dynamically reassign operation and construction operations and prevent the stocks out. So do um, I mean, take any sort of action proactively if a truck is delayed even of a few minutes. So four main usage, as I see, of how our customers use our ETA today. Perfect, thank you very much, uh, Maxime. So we have some other questions. Um, next question, Michel, is for you. And if you could explain why, uh, more in details, why you decided to partner with Shipio uh, rather than anyone else? Um, ju just in general, um, reflects what we like is we want to be the best in uh, supply chain execution. So in all the no logistic nodes of the supply chain, I talked about uh, factories, uh, warehouses, ob obviously, uh, originally, uh, and now also all the, the urban logistic uh, hubs, uh, whether they are stores or, or anything else. Um, but we have, as we said during the presentation, we have to work uh, with an entire ecosystem to get the best information that, uh, that, that we can have um, for the benefit of our, of our customers. Um, so when it comes to uh, transportation, um, it seems pretty. It seemed pretty obvious for us um, to partner with uh, with Shipio because they gave, they give us really valuable information uh, that we can reuse to plan. Um, and and this is really a big change. I mean, we probably would have not done that uh, ten years ago. Uh, the WS were not so smart as they are as they are now. Um, but we are really more and more these kind of partnerships, uh, and we are really convinced that Shipio will do this much better than we will ever do. Um, so this is, yeah, this is why we, we chose to, to partner with them. Perfect. Thank you so much, Michel. Um, next question is a technical question for Maxime uh, regarding the type of, um, of integration. So APIs are great, uh, but a lot of actors still use ADI. So can Shippo integrate these? Um, yes. First thing, of course, APIs are great, but Shipero can manage any sorts of integration. We manage flat files, we manage uh, flat files through uh, SFTPs, we manage uh, edifact and files are even written with the edifact norm. We manage uh, XM, or let's say CSV import traits on the platform to receive data. What we see is that, of course, this notion of EDI is mainly uh, linked to what our shippers are able to do, dealing with carriers, most of the time, we see that they are, let's say, more acquainted with the notion of APIs, and this is what we mainly use. Perfect. Thank you so much. Next question for Michel. It's a bit long. Um, so if the ETA is postponed for an outbound load, can Reflex then amend the priority for the moves related for that particular load and all its preparation, and how does it affect the remaining moves and loads? Um, yes, yes, it does. Um, 
everything, uh, well, everything on reflex can be based on, on loads. So uh, if we know that the outbound load will be, uh, will be delayed, then we can definitely lower the priority of, of everything that is related to this, uh, to this particular load. And to answer the, the second part of the question, um, how does this affect the remaining moves and loads? Well, I would say the answer is it depends. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on your capacity. Um, to take very uh, very concrete examples, if you have nothing else to do in the warehouse, then maybe you want to start preparing it anyway. Uh, on the contrary, uh, you might want to start working on something else uh, because uh, the ETA of the truck will be two hours later and there is another truck uh, that is leaving one hour before this new ETA. So that really depends on each kind of, of, of situation, but uh, you can automatize all this. And that's what is very important. Some customers will choose to automatize and take decisions uh, based on rules and the other ones will prefer to have uh, alerts and decide uh, themselves every time that there is a new uh, decision. It really depends on, on what kind of flow you are doing and what, what, uh, what your business is. Okay, perfect. Um, so we have one question uh, again related to ETA. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a topic that everyone wants to know more about. So what is the different between, difference between a normal routing API versus Shipio ETA? Um, it's a good question. The main difference is that they work completely differently. With Shipio, we're leveraging machine learning. So uh, we will definitely detect how much time uh, trucks will be spending on different stops in case you have a milk run. So we, we take these things into account through machine learning. Standard, standard routing ETA mainly takes into in consideration, of course, the itinerary that needs to be a truck itinerary. It takes into consideration the um, situation of the traffic, weather conditions, but it doesn't take into consideration breaks but it, because it cannot. And it doesn't take into consideration the time that trucks will be spending on each stop in case you have a milk run. So the main difference is that we do not use the same data, a uh, normal route API ETA that you can get from a PTV or things like this will uh, give you real time a real time ETA, but not an ETA that actually confronted by with uh, previous experiences, and it do not take into account the same um, the same uh, information, and we do not treat the data the same way. If you take a normal routing ETA, it's really accurate. Let's say close to the delivery, you take it 12 hours before, 24 hours before, and you might have an error of 12 to 15 hours, whereas with machine learning, we can have stable predictions and keep an error of one, two hours, maybe 48 hours before the delivery, but uh, this error will never explode. Perfect, thank you very much, Maxime. So I've sent a message uh, to all the attendees that we still have time for one question. So if nobody has questions, we can end our session now. It was extremely interesting session. Thank you very much, uh, Maxime. Thank you, Michel, for uh, preparing this webinar. Thank you to all the attendees for listening and for all your interesting questions. As well, a reminder, you will receive the PowerPoint presentation and the recording after this session. So. Uh, maybe Maxime and Michelle, if you have any closing comment before uh, we finish it. Sure. On my side, I would like to, to thank everyone for your attendance. And I hope we'll be able to discuss it even further in uh, next time or later. Thank you, everyone, for your, for your participation. Uh, we're happy to to share our, uh, our experience with you. And uh, like Maxim said, uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll see each other uh, when the crisis is over and that we can uh, go again to, uh, <laughs> to events. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And talking about uh, the pandemic, I hope everyone stays safe and thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.